page. This is Dave out in Western Pennsylvania. And here you can see my uh, aluminum alkaline battery. I have a section of aluminum baking pan that's serving as the cathode. And inside of that, it's taped up, I've got a tea bag which is filled with manganese, four dioxide, and activated carbon, about 50-50 by mass. 10% aqueous sodium hydroxide is the electrolyte. I built this one a couple of days ago. It's running a little uh, white LED that I took out of a dollar solar garden cell. I have a video on YouTube describing how I did that. And you can divert it, devote it full-time to serving as an alternative jewel thief. And if not, if you're going to use it temporarily, you can pop uh, the alligator clips off and uh, put the nickel cad back in and put it outdoors. They're a dollar each, and I have about 10 of them I use full time as little LEDs. They go down to 0.52 volts. I've done it five times. Conventional jewel thief will get you down to about 0.8 volts. Well, anyway, I'll take you over here to this section of my lab. And uh, what you're looking at is a 50-50 mix of activated carbon and manganese 4 dioxide. It's chemical manganese dioxide. There's three types, you know. Natural, the electrolytic, which is used in most battery applications, and the chemical, which I happen to have. I'm also going to make activated manganese dioxide. I haven't done it yet. I grind it up in a coffee grinder. And what I did with this uh, prototype I'm going to show you I put in about 5%, 95% by mass of this grind, and 5% five, 5 by mass magnesium, magnesium hydroxide, milk of magnesium component. Now there's a reason why I'm doing that. Magnesium hydroxide is very sparingly soluble in water, it's a suspension. and I'm using the aqueous sodium hydroxide as my electrolyte, but I have a hunch the magnesium hydroxide may be a time release agent for the hydroxide that reacts with the aluminum. And I'm hoping to cut down on the 10% sodium hydroxide. We'll see. I trial and error. I'll keep you posted. Now, this setup, I use an empty CD case, and I use a circle cutter and I cut out a section, uh, a circle of that aluminum from the baking pan. I've got paper toweling under it as insulator. Then another section of paper towel. And now there's the active anode. I've got 26 gauge copper wire from uh, telephone line or cable line and I bear the copper wire and spread that out in there as a current collector. You should see a tea bag, huh? And that has the activated carbon manganese dioxide, magnesium hydroxide. Some of the material is out, came out of the tea bag. You can get this, uh, reusable tea bags on eBay. I'm going to pick some of them up. And that is wet with the uh, sodium hydroxide. Now I'll put these back and freshly prepared yesterday I was getting about uh, 1.58 volts and I'm thinking with using nickel oxy hydroxide Murray Smith has a YouTube video to show you how to prepare it from bleach nickel chloride uh, sodium hydroxide they know with the zinc alkaline batteries that a percentage of the mag uh, nickel oxyhydroxide will boost the voltage by as much as 15 percent. So I'm going to be trying some of the nickel uh, oxyhydroxide too in my electrolyte material. Let's give you a voltage. Now I had this on earlier today and I had a short circuit on it drawing uh, the potential down but let me get you a voltage reading. I may even have to add a little bit more uh, water to this. Yeah, see we're down around 1.30 volts, 1.31, but I had a short circuit on it before. And generally, 
freshly prepared, you're up closer to 1.60 volts. There's going to be some self-discharge in the last 24 hours. And, uh, but it works really good. And you can make a pile. If you're going to increase series, uh, voltage in series or current in parallel. Now let me give you a short circuit. That was open voltage. Let's see what kind of short circuit we get. And we are off scale. It's more than 200 milliamps short circuit. Now I'll put it back to voltage because we just had a short. And uh, let's see, it'll rebound. But let's see where we're at. See, 1.22, it's going back up. I like it a lot. It's easy to work with. CD case. Put a couple of rubber bands on it. Hold it in place. And you can move these around. And as I said, create a pile. Thanks for watching. I'll keep you posted. Bye.